we go. So well, it flashed for a second. All right. Uh, so yeah, advanced Angular elements. We're gonna take. We're gonna start slow, right? I'm gonna show you how to set up the project because it only takes a couple minutes, just to show how easy it is to get going with this. And um, we'll go from there. Well, on my uh, my laptop is still deciding whether or not to show its screen. Okay. Okay. So advanced Angular elements. Um, like I said, I'm Michael Madsen. I'm lead technologist at a moment, and uh, my Twitter is in Madsen87. And uh, this project that we're going to be working on, you can find on my GitHub as well, which is in Madsen87 or MGM87. Excuse me. <coughs> so what are elements? Um, Elements are Angular components that compile to native web components. Uh, why is that useful? Um, there's a lot of people that use these for things like upgrade paths uh, from one framework to Angular. They use it to uh, pepper into their marketing sites like WordPress uh, if they want maybe the same look and feel that they use on their other sites or they want to, they know Angular and they don't want to mess around with WordPress way of things. They can just um, compile the element and put it in there. Uh, there's other uses. If you just want to be able to have the flexibility to use your component in other frameworks or in just native HTML pages like we're going to be showing in this example. <clears throat> and, and what are elements? Uh, they're just web components um, that run with Angular internally. So how do we start with uh, Angular elements? Uh, I start with an Angular CLI project. Uh, like, I think just about everyone uses the CLI for Angular at this point. And first thing, we got to install a couple uh, install a couple of dependencies. Uh, so npm install Angular elements, and then Web Components custom elements, and then Angular Dev Kit schematics. And those are the only dependencies like that you need. Another nicety is to throw in ngx build plus. Um, some people have exposure to this. It adds a lot. It extends the build system of the Angular CLI, uh, which is really handy with elements because uh, Angular will still compile and give you three uh, JavaScript files, and you don't particularly want to add three script tags just to get your element into an HTML page. So ngx build plus has uh, has some arguments to say, hey, compile this into a single bundle. <coughs> So that's what we'll use. Uh, you can use the ng add feature of the Angular CLI, and it will go update uh, your Angular JSON and everything the way you need it in order to use Build Plus. Um, I also did ng add material because we're going to be wrapping a material component today. And then the last thing you need to do, this is a little more manual, not command line, is one add to the polyfills, and I'm going to show you that in a in a diff um, just. It's a little con more convenient to read some of these that way. Oh, well, actually, polyfills I'll show here. These are the two polyfills. Um, because browsers don't fully support um, custom elements, you need to add in these uh, polyfills, depending on what browser you support. So one is for browsers without any support, and one is for browsers with partial support. So just throw those into your uh, polyfill, and then you'll be able to use the elements. Another thing you have to do, and for some reason the CLI does this in automatically and doesn't fix it when you add Angular elements to the to the package, um, is that this section under budgets in your Angular JSON file, this any component thing, you gotta delete that, or else or else it's gonna fail your builds. So that's all the housekeeping leading up into using Angular elements. Uh, now all we have to do is throw some stuff in the module file. So Angular Elements, um, it's still, you're still making an Angular app. It's just the elements tell it to compile not into like a servable web page, but into consumable web components. So the things you need to add, uh, you'll need to add the Angular injector in your imports, and you need to grab this uh, create custom element function out of Angular Elements. And then this is where the magic happens down here in the app module. Uh, so you throw the injector in the constructor, so this is the Angular dependency injector. Then you use this custom create custom element function and give it the component you want to make an element. If we had multiple elements, we'd just line them up here um, and then hand that the injector so that it can get whatever it needs out of the Angular injection. And then we call customElements.define, and customElements is the um, 
uh, JavaScript global function that defines a custom HTML element. And that's just about all you need. Uh, you'll want to remember to put the component, any component you want as a web component in your entry components. That just tells Angular, hey, this is something that Angular needs to be able to spin up without having a parent. So that's all the setup. What we are going to be looking at today is uh, I grabbed, this is the Angular Material card. Uh, it seemed like a pretty good option. Uh, I can fit all the features that I want into this card in an intelligent manner. Uh, I didn't want to make something super contrived in order to show this stuff. So the card has a few things going on and I'll show you what we've done. So I've already had this set up uh, with a basic um, component and I'm going to consume it in this index file, this index HTML file. This is just a normal vanilla HTML file and I am grabbing our bundle here. So this is the Angular element file. And then along with the polyfills. And as we saw in the main, I've defined what the tag should be, is supercard. So I'm just gonna line these up, supercard, supercard, supercard. So we should end up with three of those cards with that dog in it, and that's what we get. So this is just a vanilla HTML page now showing that Angular component. And that's kind of cool by itself. If this is the first time you're doing it, you're like, whoa, it actually works. Because stuff like this I never expect to work <laughs> when, you, when you just throw it together. Uh, but now that we have something working, let's start uh, thinking, thinking about what kind of features out of Angular that we want uh, this component to utilize. So I ident identified a few things. Um, that I know I want to be able to do. One is inputs and outputs. So those are pretty obvious. We use those in almost every component, right? Uh, the next one is uh, um, like uh, content injection. Um, so like this text maybe would be a good candidate for that. But I also wanted to do some named con content injection. Um, and not, not everyone's used that, but it's super easy and can be pretty powerful. And then the last thing is I want to throw in a shared service here because we're running with the Angular engine so we can use any sort of Angular coolness that we want. So let's, uh, let's jump over and see how we start adding these features into this component. <clears throat> so the first thing we'll hit on is inputs. So we'll just go up to our component and uh, in a TypeScript file and we'll just throw in some inputs. And when we're doing elements, really nothing about your Angular coding changes. Um, it's just how it gets consumed. So we can do basically whatever we want. So this will be an input, and when I look at this component, I see we probably want a title, and maybe a title image, and then an image here. So sources for those images. So I'm just gonna come over here and I'll make three inputs, and we'll call this title. And that'll be a string. And the other two inputs will also be strings, so we'll just do this. Oh, I gotta, yeah, it's a, there we go, thanks. And then we'll call this one title image source. Oh, boy, spaces, right? Okay, so now we have our inputs. We'll just throw those onto the template here, so we don't want this Shiba Inu, which I've never heard of this dog until I uh, was looking at material, but uh, that'll be the title. This one here, we'll replace with that image source. And then the that header image, that little circular one, is a little more complex because um, they did it as a background image in the CSS, so we'll do something special with that. Um, we'll just delete that line out of here, and uh, I'll just add it in here with the ng class. And if you're not familiar with Angular, ng class just dynamically compi composes a class for you. So we're going to say we want background image, and we're going to use that um, title image source. Um, <clears throat> and because there's some extra stuff like URL and the prints that need to go around that, I'm gonna do a getter and setter on this input. Um, I don't want you to sit around watching me write that, so I'm just gonna copy it out of here. 
If you want to understand more about that, uh, you can look it up or you can just go look at the repo and see how that's used. So I'm just going to throw that right here. So we have a setter that's going to wrap that URL with the parens around the value that we pass in. So now we have our three inputs set up. Let's jump over to our example file. Now our example file, the way you pass inputs in to a web component, uh, you know, in Angular, you would use the square brackets, but that's Angular syntax. We, we can't use that here because we're just in HTML. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to say title. It's just an attribute on the element. Oh, yes. Sorry, colors are weird because I usually do dark, but I do light <laughs> here. And this is going to be the Shiba Inu, but we'll just add those other ones here. This will be image source, and this will be title. But there's a problem with this, and this is one of the gotchas with using elements is, OK, we've gotten rid of the square brackets, but now we need to convert these things that we camel case in the template into like a, a snake case. So these got to turn into dashes with lowercase um, for Angular to pick it up properly. So we'll do that, and that's all we need. No, dashes. That's all we need there. We just need values in there. And again, for the sake of you guys not watching me type a whole bunch of stuff or look up pictures, I'm just going to copy this into here. And so now we have uh, three cards that have a title. So we have the Shiba Inu, Husky, and a pug. And then we have images for each of those. So we'll compile this and go look at go look at what this looks like. I've got it coming up here, and now we have those cards um, with custom data being passed in from that HTML. Um, so now we got our inputs fi figured out, and uh, that's fun. But now the outputs and outputs are a little more complex um, because Angular is very adri event driven. So there's not something that we can just we can't just put in, you know, our normal something like this in here. It's not going to capture an event. So we need to capture this event natively. So first thing we'll do is we'll come over here and make our events. And again, let's look at the component and see what event we want. Well, I see two buttons here. Uh, so I would like to know when those buttons are clicked. I don't want this. This component is just a UI component. It doesn't need to know the implementation behind those buttons. So we're just going to emit events when like and share are clicked. So to handle that, we'll just come in here and we'll do a output. And we'll just call it like. And that will be an event emitter. I don't know why it's not. Usually it tells me, and we'll give it a string, and close that up, and we'll also do one for share. And usually the, this auto imports, but I'll go throw it up there. Hmm? Oh, new. That's probably why it didn't auto import. So we got that, and then we'll throw in a function for each of these, like, like clicked. And that's just going to call oh, emit. And we're just going to emit the name of the dog. It's not title. Yeah, vit. What is that? Yeah, typing on a laptop keyboard is always a trip. This will be share. And again, this is very sim. This is just like what you would do, whether or not you're doing an element. And that's nice because you just use the element as normal in Angular, and then you can compile it into a web component for anyone else. <coughs> Jump over here, and we'll just throw the click of handler on here. Uh, 
And this is like. Like clicked and I'll do a prince just so. And then we'll do share. So that'll get us our outputs. Um, now, how do we handle those outputs in our HTML page where we're using the element? Like I said, it's an event, so we can just um, throw another script tag on here. And in here, we will do document dot query selector all because I want a list of um, these cards, right? And then we'll, oh, I think that's a function. And I got to tell it the query to get, so it will just be supercard. Supercard, and then we'll do for each, and this will take um, card. And then we just do um, card dot add event handle event listener. <coughs> Tell it the event. Our events are like and share. So we'll just say like. Um, yes. And then we'll get e, which is the event. And then we'll just uh, we'll do a console log. That'll be pretty easy, so that we can see what we did here. And this will be um, like event, and uh, we will say e dot detail. So on the event, the detail is where you get the value that's coming out of the Angular. And so we'll just throw on another one of these emitters or listeners for the share, and we will have everything we need. And we'll change this so we can see. Okay, so now we've coded up the output in the Angular component, and we've added code to listen for that event in our index file. And we'll go to the next step. So I've opened. Uh, the console so we can see this event come through and I'm going to, uh, we're going to like the husky. So there's a like event and there's a share event. So now that we've captured the event, we can do anything we want with that. Um, and uh, that kind of covers a lot of what people do with components. But let's get into the ng content. ng content is really quick. Um, and for me, in most cases, all I'd need for one of these elements is inputs, outputs, and this content. So you just throw in ng, and this is the most, this is the easiest of these to handle, because you just throw ng content in here, and it works the exact same as you'd expect um, out of Angular. So I'm, I'm just gonna copy the code, because I have like a paragraph about each breed of dog. So just over here. So I have a, whoops. That's the output one. Basic content projection. So you see I have a kind of a paragraph about each of the dogs. And all you do is put that paragraph inside the tags for Supercard, and then it will be projected into that Angular component. <coughs> okay. So that should be good. I hate it when indentation gets off. We'll save that. Let's jump over um, to here. Now you see we have different text for each of these dogs. So we got information about Huskies, information about Pugs, information about the Shiba Inu. And like I said, this covers um, most of what people do with uh, like UI components. But we can start making even smarter components um, using these additional features, like named content projection. Now, what named content projection does is um, we put text in here. So this is content projection. So it's going to take the text that you put in the tags for that component, and it's going to put it in the component where we tell it to using that ng content um, 
<coughs> ng content element. Uh, but name content projection is so that you can put different content in different places or separate it out so you don't have to deal with it all at the same time. Um, when I've, back when I first was messing around with like the content projection, I was like, well, that's cool. I don't know when I'd use that until you find out you do want it. Uh, and what I use it for is for um, like where I work at the moment, we have uh, kind of a micro app architecture. And so we have like this shared top bar that has your profile picture and um, some menu stuff in this top bar. And then you have a menu down the side with links to stuff you go to. Um, and with content projection, usually we just say, okay, we have the top bar with the stuff and we put the content in the middle. Um, but using name content projection, it makes it really easy to do things like, oh, this top bar is responsive to like a mobile app. So this top bar is gonna rearrange itself. So this, um, like the profile area where it has like a picture in your name, it's just gonna be your picture because you're on a phone and we don't have space for that. And like the side menu is no longer gonna be in a panel on the side, it's gonna be like a hamburger menu that slides over the screen. And using named content projection, you can say, um, you can have that top bar component manage all of that responsiveness, like, oh, this is where the menu items go, this is where this goes. And because we've named like, hey, here's the menu items, here's the, ma here's the main content for the page, and here's um, maybe some other options, as the page is changed uh, when you're on a phone versus desktop, it can take those named content areas and put them where they need to be in the different styles of components it uses. So that's an application for named content projection. In our case, um, I want to add a more info button. So what if you want to know more about this dog that we're seeing in the card? Um, one way to do that is to just have the single content area and after a set amount of text, be like, okay, we're going to hide the rest and put like an ellipsis or something that you click. But if you want to be able to say, okay, this is the text that I want in this card, and then more info will be other stuff, um, it helps a lot to be able to define that. And that's what we will use this named content projection for. Um, doing named content projection is pretty easy. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of these P sections. We'll let the parent deal with that now. And we have this ng content. I'm gonna add another one. And I'm gonna add an a, a, a attribute onto it called select. Um, we can give it a like query selector here. So I'm gonna use a class, but you can, if you had like a different component you were looking for, like, oh, did they pass in this component? I wanna pull that off. You could do that. Um, but I'm, yeah, I'm gonna do like more, we talked about more info, so I'm gonna say dot more dash info. And the way ng content handles this, you see I don't have a selector on this first ng content. Angular's smart enough to be like, okay, I've got so many ng contents here, I'm going to separate out, I'm gonna like hand this one what it says to select, hand this one what it says to select, I'm gonna give that last one that doesn't have a selector everything else. Um, so you only need to, in our case, we only need to uh, put a select in one of them. And like I said, I wanna hide this behind a button, so um, you know, add some stuff for that. But again, I'm going to just jump in here and uh, grab that so I don't have to have you sit through that. Um, so I'm just gonna wrap it in an ng container, add the button. <coughs> so place these two ng contents with, uh, come on, with this. So now we have an ng content here that's gonna get anything that doesn't have the class more info. And then we have a button for more info that's going to toggle whether we should show the info. And then the more info is gonna show depending on that toggle. So in here, um, we're gonna need a function for that, for toggle more info. So we'll just throw that in here real quick. And uh, what did I name this over here? Show more info. We're gonna have show more info and we want that to not show by default. So we'll say show more info equals false. And then in here, we're just gonna say this dot show more info equals not this 
dot show more info. So that takes care of the toggling. Um, back in our HTML file, we now need to add these named content areas. Um, and like I said, we removed the, that P tag, so we're gonna throw that on here again. Oops. And then we're gonna want another one. But this one, we're gonna give the class of more info. Okay, and then we can put more text in here. And I'll just grab that additional text. You'll see I've done this for each of the dogs. That has more information about the dogs. All this information is accurate. I did get it from the AKC website. So just, if you actually do wanna learn about Huskies, you can read this. Or go to their website. <laughs> oh man. All the clicks are wrong. Okay, so we're just gonna remove those and put in my new ones. So you see each of these, we have the um, class more info on each of these dog cards. So this is named content projection, and we jump over here, we'll go to the next step. And you see we now have a more info button. And when we click the more info button, we will see additional info about the dogs. Brought to America from Japan as recently as 60 years ago. Born as pack dogs. So there we go. These components are actually getting pretty cool. And if we're just doing dumb UI components um, or pure UI components, we'd be done right now. Um, this is um, all the features that I'd have to show. But I want to show you how you start using Angular services and stuff in these components. Um, so. Uh, Angular element, any element that you put into that bundle is actually all running on the same Angular runtime. It's all running on the same dependency injector. injector. So in essence, um, each of those components is running like a full um, Angular, it's a full Angular app running behind it. And that gives you a lot of flexibility in the stuff you can add to those components. Um, I mean, realistically, if you wanted to, you could do a whole, um, a whole app just with those components. Um, so I'll just jump over here real quick. We're gonna discard this. We're, we're over. Oh, I thought I thought it was 11:30. My bad. I'm still talking. Okay. Well, got it. That's good. Anyways, just put the service in there. It works. <laughs> okay. That's the end. All right. Thanks, Mike.